Is the new mayor no more once the calendar turns? Lenny Curry explains his successes so far in City Hall and the challenges he sees ahead in 2016. Well, we can't spike the ball or do a victory lap because we've got a lot of work to do for our city. Jacksonville's mayor offers insights into his campaign promises and how he's making sure he makes good on those. 178 days since his inauguration. Lenny Curry joining us on This Week in Jacksonville. Thanks for joining us on this Sunday morning. This particular Sunday morning, we're spending it with Mayor Lenny Curry, Jacksonville's uh, new mayor. Are you still new? We know you were elected uh, back late spring. You got to start in July. Does it still feel new, or is this old hat now? It, it, it's, it's been a long time. It's, uh, I'm enjoying it. Uh, we're, you know, we're conquering problems, uh, providing solutions. Uh, but the last few months uh, have felt like a couple of years. Yeah, I'm, I remember right uh, as you were elected and before even sworn in, you got a transition team and a whole process going there. That really seemed to kickstart pretty intense work for you. I, a lot of the response we got was it seems like the mayor is really focused and doing a lot of work. Was it like that for you? Was it? I'm sure it was more than eight hours a day, right? Yeah, I mean, they're long days, but they're rewarding days. They're productive days. Uh, sort of a recap of what we've done since I was sworn in and since transition. Uh, I said that my top priority was uh, safe city. Uh, my initial budget funded additional police officers, uh, which I'll continue to do in the years ahead. Invested money in at-risk youth. Uh, invested in infrastructure, roads, things that needed to be taken care of around our city. Uh, my budget passed uh, unanimously, and we did all that without a tax increase, which I'm incredibly proud of, and that's what taxpayers deserve. How did that feel, having that first budget go through? Obviously, there was discussion about it, but unanimously passed through City Council. Well, it was a statement, a uh, statement about uh, Council's desire to move the city forward with me and my team, a statement about uh, the quality of people that I've put around me. Council trusts the work that we're doing and providing. Uh, we put together, look, the, the budgets that had come in before this council prior to my election uh, weren't necessarily thought to be uh, the serious budgets. We are now prioritizing and focusing on, focusing on things that the people of Jacksonville care about. While it was unanim unanimous, and that's something to celebrate, however, uh, we can't spike the ball or do a victory lap because we've got a lot of work to do for our city. Uh, we've got unfunded pension liabilities that are significant. and. Uh, the biggest, the, the biggest risk facing our city and also the biggest opportunity. I'm now focused on solving that, that issue. That's the pension unfunded liability part? That's right. We've got about $2 billion from previous years uh, in unfunded pension liabilities that predate, obviously, uh, me taking office. Uh, and it's really uh, uh, crippling our ability to do the things we need to do in our city. Uh, we want to continue to hire police officers. We want to make sure that our infrastructure and our roads are taken care of. We want to make sure that uh, neighborhoods are invested in equitably. Uh, but with unfunded pension liabilities out there, it's really eating up our budget and our cash flow. It's been talked about for years. The can's been kicked down the road for years. I'm absolutely committed to solving this issue. So we will have the dollars we need to invest in our infrastructure, our public safety needs and the things that people in Jacksonville care about, quality of life. Yeah. Police and Fire Pension Fund executive there, John Keane, uh, retired, has really been on the news because it seems like he invested his own um, retirement plan better than the city's plan was for the police and, and firefighters. How do you change that going forward? And is it a step in the positive direction for you to see a transition there at the Police and Fire Pension Fund? Yeah, I think uh, it's time for a change, time for a change in governance. But I think what's really most important is um, that I, I'm going to come back to this unfunded pension liability. Uh, the city's budget right now spends uh, north of $100 million in trying to pay down a liability. Uh, these are dollars, uh, you know, people watching this show right now may have uh, road infrastructure problems around their home, may have flooding issues, uh, may have crime issues. Uh, these are dollars that we ought to be investing in solving those problems for people. That's why it is so important uh, that we turn the page and that my team working with City Council solves this issue. Yeah. Let me hear maybe some of the, the broad elements and, and then be specific if you'd like. But uh, coming up in 2016, we're about there. What happens in this new year for the City of Jacksonville? What are your priorities? Well, a continued focus on uh, public safety. 
Uh, we have, so the police officers that I funded in my first budget, they come out of the academy this, uh, this month. I'm really proud of that. Uh, in fact, uh, just, just went through graduation. So they'll be on the street working for the people of Jacksonville. Also, uh, we can't continue to just police our way out of uh, problems. We've got to invest in uh, not only in enforcement, but in prevention and intervention. And that means that particularly a real, have a real heart and care for at-risk kids. Uh, kids that maybe don't have the same opportunities that I had growing up or that my kids have growing up. For whatever reason, for whatever reason, they ought to know that there's a better tomorrow, there's a better way forward, and we're going to invest in programs. Now, taxpayers can rest assured knowing that there's a return on this dollar. The data is clear. If you look at in previous years, many, many years ago when we invested in at-risk youth, we saw the violent crime and the murder rate drop significantly. In 2011, we were at a 40-year low. Uh, government stopped investing in those programs right around 2011, and we saw it spike. So uh, it's the right thing to do to care for these young folks, but it will also make our city safer in the years ahead. So you said it's pretty easy to draw a comparison, that, that they're correlated, Absolutely. the investment in the results. Without question. Yeah. Tell me about Jacksonville Journey. I know that's something that, uh, that you've focused on here coming out of election season right. and then into implementation. Let's, let's get moving. Yeah, so the Jacksonville Journey is uh, the program that, uh, that invests in the prevention, intervention, and enforcement. Uh, what we decided to do, we increased the funding, my budget did, but instead of just investing in programs, my chief of staff and my team is working with data, looking at data to make sure before we appropriate the funds that were in my budget and spend them, we're going to know that there are programs that work, that deliver results and have an impact on A, the lives of the children that are in those programs, but then B, all of Jacksonville because it's a safer city, a more prosperous city. And, you know, the public safety uh, piece is also a huge piece of economic development. Uh, we have had some recent success in, in attracting companies and talent here. Uh, but when they're doing their research on us, if they do a Google search on us, uh, we don't want crime to come up. Uh, we want all the other wonderful things Jacksonville has to offer to come up. So to that end, I'm committed to continuing to work with the sheriff to make sure that Jacksonville is a safe city. All right. So uh, appreciate it. We're just getting started. We're going to talk about, the, I don't know, search engine optimization or something like that <laughs> for the city of Jacksonville. More with Mayor Lenny Curry when we come back on This Week in Jacksonville. Your gateway to the luxury world is here at North Florida Lincoln. Come meet the face of forward thinking. Make a statement in this 2015 Lincoln Navigator. Lease at $759 for 36 months. North Florida Lincoln. We've set the stage for luxury. After billions of years lying in the dark, I have been discovered and selected amongst hundreds. A long journey has brought me here to light up her smile forever. Forever Mark. A diamond is forever. Find your design at Underwood Jewelers. This is a Nissan. This is an Auto Nation Nissan. What's the difference? The difference is clear. Get low prices on Nissans during the Auto Nation year end event. For a limited time at Auto Nation Nissan, buy a new 2015 Nissan Sentra S with automatic for only $14,990. Or a new 2015 Nissan Altima 2.5 S for only $17,990. Hurry in to save at Auto Nation Nissan on Blanding. Me, me. You know, you pay too much for those glasses. Who? You. You pay too much. Practically everyone overcharges, except for America's Best. Who? Huh? America's Best. They give everyone a deal. In fact, you can get two pairs of glasses and a free eye exam for just $69.95. Two? Two. 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 Who? Huh? Stop it. Two pairs and a free exam for $69.95. It's not just a better deal. It's America's Best. Always a warm welcome. Always a friendly hello. Always a perfectly flaky crust. Always Mrs. Smith's Flaky Crust Pies. The only one made with real butter and abundant seasonal fruit. Warm and welcoming and fresh from your oven with our flakiest crust ever. 
you're always welcome at Mrs. Smith's. Your gateway to the luxury world is here at North Florida Lincoln. Come meet the face of forward thinking. Make a statement in this 2016 Lincoln MKZ. Lease at 320 for 36 months. North Florida Lincoln. We've set the stage for luxury. 4.55 a.m. St. John's County. Two tractors. 700 acres. 85 workers waiting. A local farmer growing potatoes for local families. That's why when Danny gets up, he turns on Channel 4. With an hour-by-hour -hour forecast, Richard Nunn tracks storms right to these fields, keeping him ahead of bad weather all day long. On this farm, Danny makes delicious mashed potatoes happen. In Jacksonville, The Morning Show makes mornings happen. You're watching This Week in Jacksonville with Kent Justice. Thanks for staying with us on This Week in Jacksonville. Mayor Lenny Curry, City of Jacksonville, with us. And one of the things we're beginning to talk about is these great things going on in Jacksonville and attracting some other companies. We know that the city has almost partnered with the Jacksonville Jaguars when they go on trips to London. What are the kinds of things that you want to see done to attract more businesses and grow the economy here in Jacksonville? Well, let me say this. Having a job is so important. Uh, it's uh, having a job is how someone takes care of their family. Uh, it, it reduces crime, but it also provides purpose, right? What you do by day or by night, whatever your vocation is, is, is about purpose. So it's important that we continue to grow the economy and attract jobs. Uh, the governor of the state of Florida, Rick Scott, has, uh, has, has made Florida a destination place for jobs. And I'm committed to piggybacking that and making Jacksonville that destination place uh, and creating an environment here. Uh, that is open for business. That is to say that the, it, the cutting through the bureaucracy, we want to make it easy. If you want to start a business in Jacksonville, Florida, if you want to grow a business in Jacksonville, Florida, those in government that touch that process uh, ought to be there to help you. That's, what my, that's where my administration has moved and will continue to move. Uh, if it's easy to do business, people are most likely to start, grow, uh, and it'll be good for our economy. Uh, the governor has really pushed uh, Enterprise Florida, which is an organization that uh, works on incentives and in bringing companies and businesses. We work closely with Enterprise Florida and will continue to in the years ahead. So if uh, the cable company wants me to come over, they offer me this great deal to get started. And if I'm already a customer, I say, hey, where's my great deal? Is it the same for every business, or are those incentives only available for people who are going to come in? Is it a level playing field? Uh, well, it's about a return. It's about making sure that there's a return on investment for the taxpayer. And I know that uh, you know when the governor's office looks at providing incentives, uh, we do it generally in partnership. Uh, the good news for us is... Uh, generally, the state puts up uh, about two-thirds, uh, somewhere close, we do about a third. Uh, and it's based on an, an economic evaluation. Is there going to be a return on investment? Does this make sense for the state of Florida? And does this make sense, particularly for us, for the city of Jacksonville? And that's the way we'll continue to do this in the years ahead. A real focus on making sure, uh, look, we're in a new economy. And we want to be attracting high-paying jobs to our city. My team and my administration, we're, we're having meetings, have been, and we're, while we will continue to pursue all businesses that would be interested in relocating or growing in Jacksonville, really a focus on what kind of talent do we want to be here? What's going to have the most impact on this city in 10, 15, 20 years? The decisions that I'm making today, whether it be on economic growth or any of my policies, my commitment is I want to make decisions that will have a positive impact on Jacksonville and will transcend my time as mayor in office. If I do my job, those that come behind me ought to get a lot of credit because things will be going really well. Gary Chartrand is someone who says we really need to focus on those, the, the STEM areas. What do you think about that? Is that where Jacksonville needs to be in science, technology, engineering, music, mathematics? Absolutely. Uh, I've met and worked with Gary on STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. Uh, when we talked about the Jacksonville journey and the, at, the yeah. programs for at-risk youth, there will be a STEM component to that. Uh, we know that that's where the jobs are. Uh, that's the direction that uh, the economy's headed. Uh, you also mentioned art, though. I, it is so important. Uh, if you look at the great discoveries that have happened over time, uh, take Albert Einstein. Uh, clearly, uh, math, he was good at math. But he was able to imagine and think beyond what was possible. Uh, and that's where he came up with these ideas. So I believe that as we implement STEM, the art piece of that, our next 
scientists, our next engineer, if they have a solid art foundation, will be able to think about what's possible and come up with the new big thing. You're going to have that creative element Absolutely. also. How about that? Uh, tell me about uh, some of the health initiatives that you've got here in Jacksonville. What do you want to see? Um, well, we are actually going to be rolling out uh, health initiatives uh, in the months ahead. Uh, healthy mind, body, spirit. We want to cover it all. Uh, physical fitness, uh, mental yeah, exactly. fitness, uh, and a real focus on. We know that successful and prosperous cities are also healthy cities across all fronts. So I would say stay tuned. Our health initiative will somehow tie. Look, we've got big park system here. Tie our parks together. Tie the physical fitness aspect to it. And, uh, and there might be a weight loss challenge in there as a community that we can join in together. Uh, there may be a challenge in there to, uh, to walk so much, so many distance uh, in any given month. Uh, and then also the mental piece as well. So uh, do I foresee or do I hear a, a tease here? There's going to be a bench <laughs> press more than the mayor or something like that? Not you that know, creative, 10 or? years ago, I may have been open to issuing that challenge, but when I'm in the gym these days and I see what these young men and women are throwing around in weight, I'm not going to issue that challenge. Yeah. I'm too old for that. Well, one of the things we still want to talk about is uh, the Everbank project. We talked about economic development, uh, and I say Everbank, I mean the field out there. Is that still connected to the shipyards and what's happening there? Because a lot of talk in the last year but maybe not as much action as some people are hoping for yet. Well, let's talk first about the investment in Everbank. Uh, it's a city-owned asset. We own the asset, and we are uh, going to do club seat works there, uh, uh, renovation, amphitheater, uh, but it's our asset, and we are investing uh, bed tax dollars. It's important for taxpayers to know the money we're investing in that asset could not be used for roads or infrastructure or police officers or youth. It has to be used for something tourism related because it's a bed tax. So it's also a tax that's likely generated by taxpayers outside of Jacksonville. Uh, the other good news on that investment is uh, the Jaguars, a private organization, is putting up half the money. So we have a private investor investing half of the total project in our asset, which is immediate return on investment. Uh, when you look at and you talk about whether it be shipyards or any of the other projects, there, I, I believe we need, ought to get the shipyards done. I believe we have to invest in other areas of downtown. We have to invest in our infrastructure all over uh, the city of Jacksonville. I do believe you cannot be uh, a suburb of nowhere, so downtown matters. But we've got to solve our pension issue. I mentioned the unfunded yeah. pension liability before. It keeps coming back there. Government should not be in the business of just picking winners and losers. Uh, we solve the unfunded pension liability, and we can invest in things that make sense and that matter, and will give a return to taxpayers. Right. One of the things uh, Mayor Curry said was that uh, in his administration, we're going to talk, you're going to hear from the community, and specifically on a human rights ordinance proposed amendment. We're going to talk about that when we come back on This Week in Jacksonville. This is a Ford. This is an AutoNation Ford. What's the difference? The difference is clear. Get low prices on Fords during the AutoNation year-end event. For a limited time at AutoNation Ford, drive a new 2015 Ford F-150 Super Crew with $12,000 off MSRP. Or a new Ford Focus Fusion or Escape with 0% financing available and $1,000 holiday bonus cash. Hurry to AutoNation Ford Jacksonville in Orange Park. Me, me. Look at you. You're at the top of your game. You're unstoppable. Nothing can throw you off track. Wait, is that your car? Uh-oh. Yeah, I saw that coming. That will throw you off track. You're looking at around 10 grand in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Let's try this again. Smart move. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Wow, you changed my old bedroom. With a little help from a Haverty's designer. He helped us uh, reinvent the whole space. And it is perfect. <laughs> I'm sure it was perfect then, too, because you're perfect. Yeah, it was perfect. No, Mom, you're grounded. It's, um, it's better now. Well, my design sense is ever-evolving, so... It's all on sale for the holidays. Shop our winter event at Haverty's and enjoy 36-month no-interest financing. Haverty's, discover something new. There exists an all-powerful force in the universe 
It surrounds us, gives us strength, turns fear into hope. And to those who seek to harness such power, this is what you've been looking for. Hurry in now to get 0% APR for 75 months. Offer ends January 4th. Get 0% APR for 75 months plus 8,000 in total values on 2015 Ram 1500 Bighorn Crew Cab models in stock the longest. This is Pastor R.J. Washington of the Titus Harvest Dome. Join us on Channel 4 every Sunday morning at 9.30 a.m. We're going to have a God time. Yes. Join the Dodge side. Get 0% APR for 75 months. Offer ends January 4th. Get 0% financing for 75 months or 3,500 total cash allowance on the 2015 Dodge Charger SXT. Register now for the Wolfson Children's Challenge. Early bird rates end December 31st. The smart drugs make you smarter. They promise to make you more motivated and less forgetful. Do they work? We test them out so you don't have to. Next Oz. Monday at 4 on Channel 4, the local station. Continuing our conversation with Mayor Lenny Curry, uh, getting into this first full year. First full year is coming for you. We're about six months in as you've been mayor here in the city of Jackson. But one of the things you brought up during the campaign, uh, as, as you were discussing things, you said you didn't know the answer yet on a human rights ordinance amendment but that you were willing to listen. So there have been three community conversations now so far. What have you heard there, and, and how is this impressing you on what the city needs in terms of an HRO? Well, well, let me say I did make the commitment and the promise, because when this discussion was had uh, in years gone by, before I was mayor, before I was in office, uh, there was an absence of leadership. So I said, look, I will host a series of community conversations surrounding this issue on a number of subjects, sub-subjects as it relates to it, uh, and we've done that. And I, I think that, in fact, I know that there's real value when you sit in a room with hundreds of people that disagree with each other, uh, some of which have made up their minds on either side, some of which are undecided, people that would never have a conversation with each other, never cross paths in this community. Uh, there's power in that. And uh, I don't know how we measure that, but I think somewhere down the road, we're going to see real value out of that. People coming together that don't typically talk. Uh, look, I've heard uh, legitimate concerns uh, from all sides of this issue. Uh, as we get through this wonderful holiday season, I'll be meeting with, uh, I'll be processing what I heard. We've also got notes and stacks of comment cards that turned in in the meetings that, that we'll be going through, that I'll be going through. And then as we get into the new year, we'll figure out which direction we want to go. You know, will there be some sort of action um, to say, yes, we want to see a proposal come through city council? Or what kind of follow-up would there be? We are, we're processing now. Uh, so that's, you know, we're just on the heels of these and uh, am enjoying the holidays and processing, processing uh, the, 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 the conversation that I think was... Um, was fruitful. Uh, again, it, 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 I have this theme, One City, One Jackson, and there are cynics and there are skeptics. Uh, to the skeptic, I say, okay, it's good for people to be skeptical because they will, skeptical people push people in leadership. I want to be pushed for the lofty goal of One City, One Jacksonville. Um, That's the skeptic side, asking the skeptics, questions. Yeah, right? the cynics, we're, the train's moving. We're, we're gonna, we are gonna fight it as hard as we can for the ideal of one city, one Jacksonville. And bringing people in a room together uh, that don't agree on some really tough issues uh, and sitting next to each other, shoulder to shoulder, uh, there's power in that. I think we'll see fruit bear from that in the years ahead. Do you want to see people be able to disagree and still care about the same things? Absolutely. Care about their city? Absolutely. I mean, I think all of us, if we step back and personalize it and think about our own personal relationships, uh, whether it's our spouses or our friends or family members, uh, we have moments of intense disagreement. Uh, but we agree that we are together as a unit and we're trying to make lives better for each other. Let me take you back to a, another campaign promise, if you will. One of the questions you brought up was, uh, in regards to this high-level concern of citizens about public safety, what's the relationship like between the mayor and the sheriff, and what's it supposed to be, and how often do you talk with Sheriff Mike Williams? 
Very often. Um, we meet, we have officially scheduled meetings where we meet with each other. Sometimes it's my office, sometimes it's his, somewhere it's somewhere off, sometimes it's somewhere off site. Uh, those are formal. It's important that you have that on the schedule so you're, you, you get together and talk about the needs of the community, particularly public safety. But we also call each other on an as needed basis. Uh, you know, after the, uh, the tragic recent terrorist attacks, uh, Sheriff came in and brought his intelligence unit in. They work with the FBI and Homeland Security. Uh, there was a debriefing there. Uh, so uh, that's an important relationship that Mike and I have, the one of trust and one of commitment to making Jacksonville a safe city for every neighborhood. Every zip code ought to feel like their city cares about them and their safety. Yeah. In our last minute or so that we've got here, is there a need in a specific zip code or is there a way you address some of those communities that have said we really are worried that our neighborhood doesn't get the focus on public safety it needs well one of the things that uh, that we know happened uh, before I took office a uh, n- number of police officers uh, were cut uh, police force when I took office was at the lowest it had been since I believe 2003 while our city has continued to grow and when you don't have enough police officers on the street they will tell you that they are literally going from call to call they're stretched incredibly thin um, so we need more police officers so they can be in areas where they're needed but also so they have the time to get out of they want to get out of their vehicles they want to build trust and relationships in the community uh, they're not able to do that until they're right sized that's why my first budget added 40 police officers 40 community service officers uh, and we'll continue to invest in that in the years ahead yeah. last thing mayor we got to meet your family a little bit during campaign season how are they adjusting how do your kids like and have dad be the mayor 30 seconds or less uh, they are kids are doing really well Molly and the kids are just uh, having a fantastic time with this I'm dad to them uh, when I walk through the front door of my house there is no such thing as mayor my wife makes sure of that and um, you know my kids are uh, uh, they're enjoying it uh, I don't know that they fully understand it uh, and, and I'll say this about the people of Jacksonville when I'm out with my family uh, with my wife and my children at a restaurant or an event People are so kind and so respectful. Uh, it just speaks to the, the kind of people that I said on the campaign that I know the kind of people we have here in Jacksonville. Yeah. Hometown Mayor Lenny Curry, thanks so much for your time. Thank Best you. success uh, in the year ahead. And thank you so much for watching This Week in Jacksonville. Next week, uh, Superintendent of Schools in Duval County, Nikolai Vidi, is our guest. Thanks for watching on air and online at newsforjax.com. At News 4 Jax, we're always covering the news, even when we're not on TV. Stay informed, on the go, and online at news4jax.com.